The five years that we weren't together was so great for me. I had so much growth during that time. I grew so much as a person because I focused on my purpose. So when we got back together, like, it just aligned. Make the best attempt that you can on dealing with your own personal tr childhood traumas prior to getting into a relationship, and even more importantly, prior to becoming a parent. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining Eight at the Table. We love the love. We appreciate you guys tapping in, uh, engaging in the comments, and really just like being a part of ooh, being a part of what we're trying to do here. Remember, this is a no judgment zone. Always keep in mind what's behind me. Like no judgment against anything. We want people to be free, do what they want to do, and we're just here to help y'all along the way. Um, today we have some very special guests. Um, super excited about what they have to tell us. I don't know if we have we had a couple here before, Rico. Yeah, well, we had the Porter. actually. I remember. Oh yeah, we had the Porter family, and there was another couple. I Shout remember out to the Porter family. Shout out Porter family, but we haven't had many couples. Um, so like, I'm super excited about you guys joining us today. We're going to be talking about just what should be prioritized in a relationship. You know, oftentimes we deal with you know the dynamic between physical attraction versus emotional intelligence. And a lot of times we pick wrong, you know, because we prioritize one over the other. So we're going to go ahead and open it up with our guests. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Gina. How y'all doing? My name is Evo. Give us y'all's info, y'all's podcast. Oh, yeah, okay. Everything. I get, I'll let, take, us, let, let us know where, where everybody can find y'all. I will take the plug. Um, so you can find us at... Well, our full name is Shit Talk Fridays, but um, you can find us on all platforms, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, at ST Fridays. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah wait, so on all, all platforms, right? Yeah, all platforms. Yeah. So okay, TikTok, cool. Instagram. Spotify, is, it the, the, is the name the same? Yeah, oh, ST, yeah. ST Fridays. Oh, damn. Y'all hit the lick on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the same yeah. everywhere. It. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but it happened. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And of course. Do y'all be talking shit? Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> our motto, our motto is drinks with a splash of controversy. Because sometimes when oh, you have been together it. as long as we have, you know, things you gotta like, have a drink. Yeah, yeah you know, sure. Like, you know, we gotta discuss controversial topics. Because yeah. I mean, I think that's healthy. To, you know, to have in a relationship. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Go, uh, and and I think it's. Are you always, gonna introduce yourself? I don't need to. Um, and I think that it's. Y'all see, I try to be <laughs> nice to him, and this is the response. Nah, nah. She tried it with the um, you know, um, me. <laughs> but it's cool. Forget about that. Let, I think it's dope to always like, especially nowadays, right? There's not a lot of couples that have, you know, um, a I, lot of history yeah. together. So I would love because you guys share some dope in information about y'all, you know, y'all upbringing and, and your relationships mm -hmm. and whatnot and marriage. And I think it'd be dope to share it with the audience. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, you want to take the lead on this one? Or? OK. Um well, let's start off with um, happy wife, happy life, right? Because that's why he was like, sure, you want to take the Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? Is that, is that y'all's motto for y'all's marriage? No, no, no. I, mean, no, no we, I, was, I was just joking no. on the Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> she was talking shit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, right? Rico picked up, that, yeah. picked up on that ASAP. Um, so you were talking about there, you don't see like a lot of longevity in relationships. Uh, the fact that we have been together as long as we have, which is 20 years, there's a lot of work that goes into having the type of relationship that we have. And what I feel like happens now, why you don't see it as often, is that there's so many options out there that people are not willing to put in the work because they're like, why should I, why should I put in the work to this when I just have this other option right over here when there's several? But him and I made a commitment to each other that that is not an option for us. So we're willing to put in the work. So that's why we've been together for 20 years. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm very, um, I'm very firm on the fact that, and keeping it simple, and focusing on the fact that relationships are about relating to each other. Um, and I think that as long as, at least for us, as long as we actively, um, constantly try to relate to each other and relate to each other's feelings and emotions, we're constantly showing um, thoughtfulness and respect to one another, mm. and therefore gaining each other's respect on different levels and building off of that regularly and growing off of that. And I think that's important in a relationship. And it's, it's, it takes a lot of work, um, but it's, it's, it's actually quite simple. You just have to like stay at the task. I mean, not for us, at least that's what, you know. Yeah. Right, so you guys been married for 20 years or together for 20 together. years? Together. Yeah. Together 20 years. Oh, you been married? 13. Do you feel like things changed at any point? Because we actually talked about this last mm -hmm. week, like that 
specifically Rico said that women change mm -hmm. after after they get married. So like do you feel like there was a change at all when you guys got married? Mm, I would say that initially there wasn't we didn't feel a change. Unless I'm, I'm, I'm maybe I don't want to speak no. for you, but no. I don't I don't feel like initially there was a change. Um, I want to say maybe after I can't really put a number on the years, but what I will say is that the dynamic changes. Mm -hmm. So I didn't change as a person necessarily, but the way that we functioned as a couple change. So, you know, people like to say that it should be 50-50. What I think changes is who sometimes is pulling more of the weight. So there are aspects in our relationship where I'm doing 70% and he's doing 30. That doesn't mean that it's less on his end. It's just where he can function at that point in time. And then there's times where I'm doing 10% and he's doing 90. That to me is what changes over time. And I think sometimes couples struggle with that because they're not comfortable in maybe the position of doing more or doing less. Mm. Yeah, so we, we've never talked about that. I kind of yeah. like that conversation. It's dope, and that's why they've been together for twenty years. The ones that change are not making it that far. But do you think that people? <laughs> but do you think that people are actually even interested in going and in, in recognizing yo? Like, okay, I'm doing ten right now. Mm -hmm. Deal with it, you know. And then at at some point. It's going to be a time where you're only doing 10%. Yeah. Yes. Uh, they, I think that it's, it's super important to kind of like just go with the flow. Um, recognize, you know, where certain strengths lie. Like if there's, a, if there's a certain point in our relationship where, you know, I have the ability on taking on certain tasks in the relationship and it's clear, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step forward. And as a unit, I'm going to take care of those things because I'm capable at, of doing those at that moment. And then there will be certain times in our relationship where she might be the sh better suited for certain situations in our relationship and we'll recognize that as a couple and she'll take the lead and you know we'll kind of like you know balance each other out but always kind of just having the goal at hand that there's no roles to be played here we you know we're a unit and whoever's better suited to take care of anything that might uh, we might be confronted with as a, as a couple we'll go ahead and deploy that person to take care of that at that time yeah okay. i love that idea you know, actually that sounds so great I, as you were saying it, I'm just like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But this is like it, being real. But just it, being real. You know, listen, it takes, it takes a, a, a level of, um, of, of, of being humble, right? So as like a man, you know, there may be certain, certain things that like, as a man, I feel like that I should be taken care of, right? And I may not be able to at the moment. And I see that she could, which has happened in our relationship. And I'll be okay with that. And I'll let her go. I'll say, go ahead. You know, I'll be, I won't let my ego get in the way, you know? I'll just let her deal with it, you know, because she can. And, you know, we're going to get through this together, you know, and I think that that's important. Difference. Because, yeah, I think that's dope. Uh, and I agree. The only problem is sometimes sh sh it's not easy. It's a lot. It takes a lot of humbling for some of the women to be like, all right, I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, that know, too. But, that too, you know. I mean, but again, it just, it really, um, it, for us, yeah. I just and I can't I, I can't you know oh, okay. I can't yeah, speak yeah, yeah. for yeah. for multiple you know for everybody but for us it really just boiled down to um, being able to relate to each other's strengths. Yeah. Now, so. there's this one thing that we say here at Eight at the Table all the time is like that sounds poetic, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm not gonna say that that sounds. Don't poetic. put it in quotes. It's a real thing. Mm. <laughs> it's a real nah, nah. You know what it is? <laughs> I had a lot of people tell me that Wednesday. Once they, once they, they see, see me this, this <laughs> they know it was coming. Like they know it's on. Yeah, yeah, but this one is not like that. This okay. is more so like that's the good side of things, you mm -hmm. know. The been, being together for twenty years, you know, figuring out who's gonna pull what, and actually being, you know, having a level of reciprocity mm -hmm. within your relationship, yeah. which is dope, which has helped making it work. But also, let's also dive into the other part of it, you know, like. The, the growing part in terms of how did you even get when it ain't to be married? No, no, no. How'd you get to the point of being married? You know, um, like the story that you guys were bringing and shedding light on, you know, like your, the beginning of it, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of the middle of the beginning. Yeah. For all prior to the marriage part. Okay. So you want to know kind of like our the journey. journey? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so just to give a, like a little background on us, Evo and I met you know, obviously 20 years ago, so um, that's 2000, and I was really young, I was 20 years old, and he was 22, and initially it started off kind of like, this is going to be casual, this is just going to be fun, and I wind up falling head over heels for him, and then he immediately recognized that that was something that wasn't going to be healthy for us at that point in time, because he knew where he wanted to be. But I was really confused at that point in time. So he then ended it between him and I, and I was really devastated. And then we were separated for five years. 
And to further add to that, I also have two children previous to our relationship. So that really added like another level of... Before you guys met at 20? Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, so... Um, it really, it really adds like a totally different dynamic to our relationship. So during the five years that we were separated, or like, you know, not dating or whatever you want to call it, I had a lot of growth during that time. I had a lot of time to self-reflect. And it allowed me to really understand why he decided to step away at the time that he did. Because at 20 years old, all I heard was, this man don't want me. Exactly. You know, but after five years, I reflected and said, wow, he did the honorable thing. He backed away and said, if I continue this relationship, I'm in the end going to be the asshole because I'm going to hurt you because I'm not going to be able to give you what you actually need. Yep. Right. So five years later, when we met back up, I was a totally different woman and I approached him. I actually called him on his home phone. Damn. And yeah. <laughs> Wait, it just like this. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was. Right? That was, that was <laughs> she had my home number. Okay. No, home number. <laughs> Wait, do you have a home phone? I have a home number, but not a. No I don't have a phone. Yeah. Well, you have a number, but not a phone. Well, this yeah, is Xfinity. Give me the triple play. Come on, <laughs> say, I want to talk about that. No, no, no. 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 But this is back when you called somebody at their house. Yeah. Yeah. You can still reach them on the cell phone, but you can still call them at home too. Yeah. That's why I'm stressing. You have the wireless phone. phone? No. The wireless phone. Oh yes, yeah. The wireless phone. The wireless phone. Oh yeah. You know, because not the one that's on the wall. It's a cordless phone. Cordless wireless. What is that? So that being said, um, yeah, when I called him, I literally just said to him, hey, listen, um, you know, five years ago, we had a thing and you left such a lasting impression on me. You made me realize that you were the man that did the right thing by me. And here I am trying to like navigate my way through life, trying to figure out men when you were really putting it out on the table for me. So I wanted you to know that one, I appreciated that. For, I now understand the value of that. And two, I fell in love with you and maybe I never verbalized that, but that's how I felt. And how are you doing? And we wind up talking for three hours on the phone, went on a date to like the next week. Yeah. And we've been together ever since. Wow. I would never. I, yeah. I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> like I literally would never. Like yeah. I think, I mean, it's beautiful and poetic, but like I could never see myself like calling somebody that well, broke up with me. So the, you know, the interesting thing was is that back when we first dated, um, I feel like that she was the type of guys that she was used to dating were very much into so like they were into her and they would pretty much do anything do whatever whatever yep. she said and when she when we met no simping right here that's my guy no simpy moment when we met i was i was uh <laughs> I was talking. I appreciate the plug. I was, yeah, I, was do, I was at school full time and I was working full time. I was literally doing like uh, like ten like Serious. ten credits and like forty hours a week. And you know, whenever I could hang out with her, I would. And a couple of times she would try to get me to di divert from work. And every single time I'm like, well, hang on for a second. Like, let's 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 Bigger let's picture. keep it clear, right? Mm -hmm. I like you. <laughs> But don't come between my work and my focus, and we'll be fine. And like it was the first time, I guess, that like a, like a like a guy really like stood his ground in front of her, mm. and she said she really respected she was like, that about yes, me. Yeah, yeah, right. I was that. like, where are we I going? <laughs> I didn't fold, right? And so when we started dating, um, again, I knew that I just wanted to do something casual. And when I found out that she had feelings for me, again, I stood my grounds and I said, this ain't it. Like this, I could... I, I know what I got to do to make this work, but I just got out of a relationship, and so I can't do it right now. And listen. And so respectfully, I'm going to end this, because if not, you're going to get hurt. But this is the first time? This is the first time, yeah. right? Oh, okay. Yeah, and I was like, well, you're going to get hurt. And so that's when, you know, we went our separate ways. But the interesting thing was, is that I was so down about being in a relationship that she caught me at a bad moment. Like, my last four relationships prior to her, like, I was that guy that was, like, wanted to be in a relationship. Like, I was focusing on settling down. None of those relationships ever worked out. So when I met her, I knew instantly. Like, I knew that I could marry her back when I first met her because she made, she gave me this feeling that I got when I was young that I wanted to live in the rest for the rest of my life. And I hadn't experienced it through any of my relationships until I met her. And I said, I can't fuck this up. I'm, gonna, I, I'm just going to take a shot here. I'm going to let this go. And it was like one of that cliche, like if you love him, let him go, you know, like I'm just going to let this go and I hope that it comes back to me and we could pick up, you know, when I'm in the right place and I could do what I got to do. And um, once we got back together, I was finally like in a place where I could devote 
the time into the relationship and we just we never look back and listen he still made me wait we dated for nine months yeah i did it for nine months because i had to get to know her yeah this guy's the goat i had to make sure that she was in a relationship i mean like you know that she was serious because i had dated a, a lot of girls in the past that like they said they were serious but they just weren't as serious as i was and so and, I, and i'm a firm believer in just things being organic right so when we were dating i knew that i didn't want to like put the label on the relationship unless it felt right. So one, day, so literally one day it was just like I was hanging out with my friends and they were like, "What are you doing today?" And I'm like, oh, "I'm gonna get a haircut, do my laundry, and I'm just gonna probably gonna hang out with my girl." And they were like, well, "What'd you say?" And I was like, "Do my laundry." I was like, "Yeah, do my laundry, right?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, I just called in my girl, didn't I?" And they were like, "Yeah, you did." And I was like, yeah, right. this, "This is it." I was like, "This is what I've been waiting for." And I called her up and I was like, "Yo, I." And I told her what happened. I said, "I." I Never asked you if you wanted to be my girlfriend, but I feel like nine months we're there. You know, <laughs> nine months it took, and uh, thankfully she she accepted. Wasting time. Yeah, <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't a waste really, of time. Honestly, it, wasn't a waste of time. it really it really wasn't for me because again, I had previously in the past I had rushed to put the label on things, to put a yeah. name on things, right? And mm. I realized that that you can't do that. Like it just has to it has to feel right for me. And so I was not in a rush to put a name on it, to call us, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend and girlfriend or be anything that like just titled it until, until it felt that way. Mm -hmm. And so that's when we uh, made, yeah. became official. A couple. Fools rush in. Fools rush, <laughs> Fools rush in. <laughs> Fools rush in. That's why and we said this here at Ada the Table so many times when people be like at three months, what are we? And I'm like, yeah. what are you talking about? Like mm -hmm. we're dating for three months. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've been saying this at the same uh, for a long time. The same amount of time that you put into something is the same amount of time that you have to put into the other thing. So if you put in twenty years of you, you can't put in three months of you and think somebody's gonna understand all twenty years of it. It's yeah. not even realistic. Now, I just want to say, guys, if you understand what just happened, this is what I heard, and I just want you all to practice the same thing. Go out and fulfill your purpose as a man yeah. first. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Stop going head over heels for women first and then lacking your purpose. And then at the end of the day, she's going to respect the man of you that you're now lacking. So if you have to step away from a, a good woman to go get yourself situated, there's nothing wrong with that. That good woman is still going to be a good woman, hopefully. Right? And she then might, you guys can pick up where you left in, off. In the, in the meantime... <laughs> No, it's all right. No, no. Listen, dating outside is all right, but I, I like, I'm not speaking this. Well, forget it. This is the no, only guy. No, I agree if, with you. If any one of them were to go totally left, I don't think they would have been married for 20 years. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's all right. It's okay to preserve yourself. It's all right. Like you can date, experience life, but you can't just go out here and just. Start you know, again. You so, know how many girls break have a breakup. And they all they heard was you don't want to be with me, yep. and they go out and Almost. they go ahead and get Joe, Jack, Bob, and Tom. Harry and Tom. Keisha. I mean, not Keisha. Oh, maybe Keisha. They get a cup. Oh yeah, maybe Keisha. Maybe right. Keisha. You maybe know. Keisha. <laughs> you like, no, but, no so judgment zone. I, I agree with you. Like, you, remember the other day we were on the chat, and I was like, when you can give a piece of advice, and that advice can clearly be applied to men and women. It is sound advice. It's fundamentally mm. good advice. What you're saying, even though you're addressed it to men, is good advice to a woman. If you feel like the shit doesn't serve you, like what your greater purpose is, and you actually know what your greater purpose is, walk away. Yeah. Because you're not going to be good for that person. You're not going to be good in any type of union. Like, I 100% I agree with you on that. And that's why I say the five years that we weren't together was so great for me. I had so much growth during that time. I grew so much as a person because I focused on my purpose. I focused on who I wanted to be. I focused on my career and building my own wealth for me and my family. So when we got back together, like, it just aligned. So I, I want to kind of, like, tie that into our topic as well. Sure. Do you two feel as if maybe potentially um, your separation... Mm -hmm. help develop a better emotional intelligence mm -hmm. and emotional maturity? 100%. Actually, it gave me a lot of time to reflect on what conspired between him and I. It allowed me to really understand how I felt in that moment and why I felt that way. What was that? So I felt rejection immediately. And I felt like, why is it that he's rejecting me when I'm presenting myself in what I consider to be in the best fashion of who Gina can be, right? But he's still telling me no. So that time that we spent apart, it allowed me to be really like, to dive deep down in who I was and why 
he did what he did because for a long time I almost thought that it was like my fault but it really had nothing to do with me right so right. it took me to be emotionally aware to understand that the feelings that I was the feelings that I felt you know they were okay to feel but I necessarily didn't do anything wrong and it was actually the right thing for us for that to happen for us at that moment in time but if I didn't have that time apart what I potentially would have reflected the way that I did and really thought about my feelings and really thought about how he made me feel yeah. probably not so pretty much you you <clears throat> wouldn't have grown is yeah what you're saying. um he actually helped me be a better person when I dated after him because what it did for me was when I dated other men after him if I merely felt like this wasn't going to work out I was so upfront about it Whereas in the past, maybe I was just like, you know, you kind of hold hope for certain things or you're like, he's nice or, you know, you kind of, you know, play on that card. But if I felt that the energy wasn't there, like, nah, my G, we yeah. do it. I was like, hey, <laughs> listen, <laughs> you're a really nice guy, a termination letter. Right. <laughs> but I got to go, this, is not, this ain't it, this you know, <laughs> and in the same regard, there were a lot of men that would immediately have this like strong emotion for me. And I'd be like, oh, uh, pump the brakes. You know, where it, old Gina maybe would have been like, yeah, I'm all about this because he's giving me what I think I want. But it helped me recognize that that's not what I really needed. So do I told him you, so that. So do you think it was the, the time that created a space for you to become emotionally intelligent? Mm -hmm. Or do you just think it was just... Experience. Yeah, like, or, or just like growth. Like, do you, do you feel like it was something that... It's like, damn, I ain't, I ain't got no dude now, so maybe mm -hmm. I just need to do better, be better. Or do you think it was really just that experience that kind of propelled you to be like, you know what, let me rethink how I'm approaching relationships, how I'm approaching life, how I'm approaching like building something with somebody? I definitely think that it had a lot to do with the experience. Um, the experience really shifted my perspective on how maybe I should accept rejection and apply rejection going forward. So in that regard, when he rejected me, I felt hurt, where in actuality, it was the best thing for me at that time. So then I applied that same logic to for going like, forward, yeah. yeah, going forward. So definitely was the um, it definitely was the experience, I would say the time helped give me a lot of time to reflect, right? Because I didn't just move on to someone else right after him, you know, I took that time to really focus on myself and what I needed. So um, it's a little bit of both, but definitely the experience. Do you, um, sorry, I had a brain okay. fart. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Rico. So You're looking uh, eager. I'm not eager. I'd be chilling, you know, guys. <laughs> shout out to eight at the table. And by the way, shout out. Thank you. Thank you. And, and shout out to everybody that have been subscribing. We have our date box, you know, just just a quick insert. Absolutely. We have our date box that, are, that is live and it is definitely going to be something great for you. Mm. Go ahead and swing shot that real quick. Y'all see me? Date box. Yep. So this is definitely something great for you and your spouse or you and you your want to be or soon to be spouse um, can utilize to hopefully have a healthy 20 year relationship um, like our guest that we have here today. Thank you. Um, no, thank you. Say something yeah. about the date box. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're actually um, we're going to get one of these, <clears throat> right? And I just want people to understand that even though we've had um, the time that we spent together, we still at this point in our relationship are always looking for new and interesting ways mm -hmm. to make things exciting. So if you may think that this might not be for you, just know that I'm excited for this box mm. just to see what's in it what's new what what can we add what what tools are inside of it that we you can use to add to our relationship and maybe build off of so um you know definitely something to check out for sure there's just so many times and, and i think you know i think we talked about this like you know during the pandemic people were just inside mm. yeah. and they didn't know how to get along they didn't know how to talk and you know a lot of times we just need that push to like help us figure out like, yo, how do we start this conversation? How do we have fun again? How do we delve into like some things that we haven't talked about or dealt with for, for a while because right. we're kids, house, bills, X, Y, and Z, you know? So like Daybox is really like bringing something that I think that we really need to just like kind of jumpstart. You know, like when yeah. somebody, what is it called when they jumpstart a yeah, car? Jump yeah, jumpstart a car. Exactly. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, it's, give, it, give it some life. Yeah, just a little bit. It's real something. easy to get comfortable in a Absolutely. relationship you know and just kind of stop focusing on the dating right 
a lot of couples they get together and you know it's new and exciting at the beginning there's that infatuation phase where it's like usually lasts about a period of a uh, year of a, a period of a year um and then after that you know you really get to know the person that you're with and you know the excitement kind of fizzles out so i could see how something like this would be great yeah know? it kind of reignites that yeah, yeah that and like a few shots of rum and we good there right some, 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 there's, 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 does it come with the day box subscribe right now no there it does have a drink in yeah. it oh that's one of them right I there i love that it's like infused um martinis does it have the or alcohol in it already margaritas. Nice. Yeah, like, oh so you just add it you just add the alcohol everything okay. you know, all the ingredients are there for you yeah just so like the flavor is there exactly seeing that in itself is an experience that you could have with your partner or your significant other that sometimes you probably wouldn't even think to do something like that have y'all ever baked the cake together <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. so random, but yes. I believe that if you can't bake a cake with your partner, then y'all not gonna last long. Why? Because like, like it shows teamwork. You Let know me I mean? tell you, Rico. Cooking is such an essential and like a staple in our household. We enjoy doing it so much together. Like I'm looking forward so much to Thanksgiving because of how much we enjoy cooking together. Yeah, we do. So See, whether 13. it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, we are doing it. And you know, we've also brought our family into it. We make it like a union thing. And there are many moments where he spearheads it, um, or I've shown him dishes, and then he does it better than me. And I'm just and like, go ahead, so go ahead and do that because yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Just make sure you save a seat for me at the table Thanksgiving. Oh, <laughs> right. What y'all cooking? <laughs> it's more like what we not cooking. Oh, oh right? Cooking. Up my alley. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not going to lie to you. Like, huh? every time I hit about oh, yeah. 18 months what with a girl, I just oh. be like, this is work. It is. Like, Everything. Is work. It is work. Yeah, but like the first like six, the, the first six the to eight months, or? the honeymoon, the honeymoon phase. Yeah, the first six, but like the sex is lit. But then after that, it's like, all right, I gotta really care about how you nut right now. Like, I gotta do this. So here's the thing, right? I'm a selfish so, individual. Oh man, wait. you said the words right out of my mouth. I was like, <laughs> mm. she's like, what the. Is it? You gotta get oh, roll over on you like tomorrow. I got you. I got you. You gotta get through two years before you can even like for me like actually make a fair call on is this something that's going to be serious right because I, like i said mm. the first year is an infatuation year like it's everybody's got their best foot forward you know but something about a year right something about that number that like when you complete that with a person something changes you're like oh we made it through a year right and just, even that psychologically makes you feel like i'm kind of good now right so then i do spend the next year actually getting to know the person who hasn't who's not putting their best foot forward right that's when the true colors start going coming through right so the second year you, now you're evaluating somebody who's, you can get a true evaluation. And I feel like then after that, you can make a fair decision on like, I really know this person. I really know who they are. Can I see myself moving forward with this? And that's just. No, I agree. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot that once that year hit. Yeah. I'm talking about the same day. <laughs> he said the same He said 366. <laughs> said, what am I doing? <laughs> that's how you know. Listen, you're a great person. <laughs> It ain't you, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have a serious question why Rico's over here being a terrible person. Wow. Um, no judgment. So, you're right. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Hey, put this on record. Yeah. I apologize. Mm. Mm. That is for my husband. Mm. That is for my friends. That is for everybody who says I don't give apologies. It's on record. What is today? In the year of our Lord, September <laughs> September 29th, 2022. She said, you want an apology? Go watch this episode. Exactly. <laughs> um, no, but like, okay, so like keeping it spicy, mm -hmm. like how do you, you guys have been together for 20 years, mm -hmm. like how do you have conversations about like, how do we keep things spicy? Like how do you ask for something that you've never done? How do you, um, well, without offending, because I think, it, it can come off as offensive, even if it's not really like what you're yeah. trying to do. How do you, how do you have that conversation? Uh, that's a really good question. So one of the first things I'm going to say is that you have to remove your ego immediately. Because if you're just looking to do something with your partner that is completely ego driven, then you're not going to get your partner to want to be part of that experience with you. Right. So you want to explain to them why it is that you're seeking this sort of pleasure 
and why it may be beneficial for your sex life or the journey of your sex life to maybe implement that. Um, because I can tell you personally for Evo and I, there's our t there are times that we are on different ends of the spectrum when it comes to uh, what we enjoy sexually. And there are times that we've had to have a conversation like, okay, um, I like it a little bit more rough. You like a little bit more soft. Where's the where's the middle ground for us so that we are both receiving satisfaction and that we're walking away from that experience like, yeah, like that was good. We like both I, I'm it. I'm enjoying right. that. Um, but yeah, definitely removing the ego. And I'm just going to be 100 percent honest. I think women like to shy away from these type of conversations because they're afraid of hurting the man's ego and they're afraid of asking for the man to really please them in a way that is maybe going to seem aggressive somehow. How is? And yeah, and ladies, to be to be Always. one to be 100 percent honest, if this is the person that you are in love with, this is the per the person that you are considering your partner, then there should be no fear. Now, if there's fear then there's something else going on there. You got to address that. Because I will let you know right now, I'm not shy about telling him what I want, and he's not shy about telling me what he wants. Yeah, y'all are Capricorn and Tauruses. They're like two most horniest species. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm just making that up. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> but I, but like, Because I was going to say Aquarians <laughs> are, but you know. No, nah, but we're like, Aquariuses are too, but Tauruses, like, all my homies as tourists, they be bugging. I'm like, yo, you're doing way too much. Like, nah, I love this, bro. I love this. And Capricorn's like, at a certain point in my yeah. life, it was definitely like that. You know, it was. I mean, I, and, but I was. It was when I was young, and and just you know to touch on our on the story a little bit. I, I finally felt something real with a girl, and I at that point I hung all that up. Like I wanted to live in that moment, like that deep moment. Mm. I I didn't want anything shallow and superficial ever in my life after that again. And so, and I didn't, I didn't um, experience that moment again until I met her. And that's you how have I, to that's write how, that girl a check. That's how I knew I wanted to marry her. I've, I've said this story a, a lot of times. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have but to write her a check. In reference to your question, not um, until you say her name. So I think mm. no checks. Doesn't start with an S. She gets nothing. She gets no. She gets zero. Right. Zero. I'm not getting paid for this yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it's super important that before two people sleep with each other, right? If they really like each other and they're dating, to actually try to have this conversation early on, right? Ask, like interview the person that, you, that yes. you're with and maybe ask them, you know, are, is it like, are you okay with speaking about our sexual experience after we've had sex? Can I, can I openly talk to you about things that maybe um, weren't, right, weren't really there for me, you know? And are you gonna be comfortable with that? Are you gonna be okay with me trying to um, say things that are gonna help you better please me? And I think that, that getting these questions out in the open early sets the tone for being able to talk about those things later on in, in the relationship. Mm. That's, you know, a, that's, so a good, that's a good point. That is, but it's something that, you know, it, I'm speaking in hindsight, okay? So don't don't think like I, this is a, like a thing that I did all my life, right? <laughs> it's just looking back and reflecting like, you know what? This is actually a really good thing to do. Um, and I think that sharing that and giving that to people, um, if they're able to apply that, it may be a lot, may be more helpful for them to be able to have these totally conversations. Agree. But. For the most part, like, well, in y'all's experience, mm -hmm. do you feel like, you said we feel like women shy away from the conversations. Yeah. But I actually feel like women probably get the biggest benefit if they don't shy away from those conversations. One thousand percent. They do. And I think that the lack of knowing that is like the most important thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, are you going to get a one experience or are you going to get a 12 yeah, on a tin scale. Um, I feel like <laughs> exactly. women, for the most part, we're kind of almost trained from when we're really young to like, preserve a man's ego and to make and a man feel yeah to make a man feel good and to like not make him feel inferior in a certain situation. So if something goes down when the two of you are having sex where you're not receiving full pleasure, but he is, a lot of women will fake something, an orgasm, to like infat like to inflate a man's ego and then walk away from that experience With hating yeah. everything that just conspired. Because they're, they're, they live in like this fear of speaking up. So you are so right in saying that, yes, a woman will, th uh, they will benefit from speaking up for themselves more than they ever know, but it like kind of takes that leap of faith. You gotta like, you gotta, you gotta speak your truth. And if you don't, you're gonna kind of find yourself in that situation a lot. Right. Have you had women like speak up, Rico? See, the thing is, I'm like, I've been what he said for about a decade now. So 
I'm I'm the first one to ask the real questions. But do, but do the or are the women responsive though? That yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because like I know how to I know how to have a conversation with somebody. Like before I deal with anybody on a serious level, uh, and on a serious level, I'm talking about to the point where I'm having sex with you, which is serious, right? We're gonna X out one night stands. I don't I'm want nobody drop comment. DR. <laughs> not 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 the one night stands. I'm talking about the the American movement. <laughs> not in DR. <laughs> not DR. DR is all right, but whatever. Um, Columbia. But like, in the point where like, you know, if I'm meeting a girl and we're talking for a week or two, I'm having these conversations mm. or early on. Wow. I'm okay. straightforward and. The way I look at it is because I didn't had a one night stand turn into a two year relationship. Shit. Right? And that two year relationship was it was cool, but it was draining because I was learning so much and once like we had such a great sexual um experience, we were just like, yo, we wanna keep on doing it over and over again and we were really focusing on our sex and not really focusing on us. Right. So now what I'll do is before I even get to that one night stand or that one that one time we have sex, I have these conversations. I, I don't I don't I can't afford to waste time and I don't really care to waste time. You know, what do you like? How you want to be pleased? What can I do? And, and what do I like? Or this is what I like. And this is how I want to be pleased. You know, these are questions that I have early on. And do you do you feel like your counterparts are because I. I, I can identify the fact that you're more of an anomaly. So do you feel like your counterparts are having similar conversations such that... I think they are. Like, you got to think about it. A lot of people that I know, men and women, right? This is not just me saying this. We've probably seen memes about this all the time, right? People are having sexual conversations, which are like fantasizing conversations mm -hmm. through text messages. And then they get into the bedroom and it's nothing like what they were portraying. So when you're having these fantasizing conversations, this is allowing you to understand what this person kind of likes, what this person, what this person is going to do, how this person is going to react and respond to, you know, certain things that you're doing. Then once you get to that point, maybe they're not liking that. So I think a lot of people and, and unfortunately... A lot of women don't know how to please themselves at a young age. Mm -hmm. So now when they don't know how to please themselves at a young age, they're doing everything to please a man. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's kind of hard because the man is just going to take whatever he's giving. or And a lot of times it's going to be at her, you know, at her expense. discomfort, mm -hmm. her, yeah, her expense and yep. whatnot. Um, so as women get older, like, I love the fact that when I was 21 years old, there was a 35-year-old woman in my life that told me exactly how she wanted to do it. Mm. I said, what? Like, God damn. <laughs> Did she wrap your dreads around her hand like... You know what's crazy? Like, so... <laughs> She, 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 she said, come in, young blood. She definitely did. Like, and I was like, I was like, I, like, you know what's so funny? <laughs> One girl did it before, and I was like, get off my hair. <laughs> this ain't that. But when she did it, I was like, damn, I'm kind of her son. <laughs> I don't want to disrespect yeah, her. Right. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. Move to the left. <laughs> But, like, and when she set the tone, because from that point on, I would not have sex with a woman that didn't know her body, you know? And, and if I did, I I was doing it with already premeditated intentions of not caring if she was satisfied. Because right. mm. she didn't know how to satisfy herself. I'm not going to sit here and try to figure it out. Unless I really like you, because, you know, there's those ones. There's those ones, yeah. Those ones. I do whatever you need. Like. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Okay. Yo, you're so terrible sometimes. You know that? I have a question for y'all, right? Sure. Get the attention off of me. Um, <laughs> I think you serve it up, though. <laughs> yeah. Right? I love it. I love it. I know, I love it. But, all right, so y'all have been married for a long time, and there were times that you probably had to spice up your sex life, right? Mm -hmm. Assuming. What is the longest amount of time throughout your relationship that you, not including the, the separation, mm -hmm. that you two did not have sex? Hmm. Um, That's a good question. I want to say the longest time that we went without having sex would probably be like two weeks. Yeah, I would say that that's accurate. Yeah, I mean, you know, after after some time, you know, like there's, you know, you it's very easy to get caught up in the kids, work, house, you know, everything that, you know, that life, life, life throws at right. you that it kind of can easily pull you away from the intimate 
relationships that you have with your, with your partner. So there are those moments where, you know, just life just has you caught up and you're just really busy and you're just focusing on so many things that sex kind of can take a back seat a little bit. Yeah, and there was actually a, a good portion of, like, our life where I traveled a lot for work, where I was yeah. away from the house, where two weeks was the norm yeah, for us not to be yeah. together. And that's dope, though. There's people who are married for 20 years, and they'll be like, we haven't had sex in five years. Oh, yeah. No, that's <laughs> that's not okay. And I and I say and 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 I no. I told you, Capricorns and Tauruses. And like, <laughs> no, listen, no slight against anybody that is experiencing those difficulties, because that can happen. There can be a disconnect sometimes sexually, because yeah, you just have maybe lost that connection with your partner. But what I will say is the reason why I say it's not okay is that the bond that we experience sexually, it, that's like so important to him and I. You know what's very helpful, and I'm going to share something that works well for us is that um, we take time and effort to um, to engage in intimacy mm. right? and when I say intimacy I mean like we'll lay in bed and just have deep conversations you know in an intimate moment you know where we're really like touching each other's emotions and you know and really just um, doing things that are more mentally engaging than they are physical and I think that those are important because it really keeps the chemistry going that works really well for us. And keep it real, we have like naked Tuesdays. Yeah, we do. Where we just lay in bed with each other no naked. Sex. No sex. No sex. We just lay, and it, it just creates a level of intimacy. I mean, you're yeah. vulnerable. Wait, you what know? if you Damn, I'm like, I can't wait for Wednesday. When 12 o'clock? Yeah, we like, can. We oh, can. We can. Oh, absolutely. It can. Okay. So but, it can lead to sex, but that's not the intent yeah, behind that's it. Yeah, that's not the okay, intent. Okay, gotcha. We like to say, naked Tuesday is intended to not have sex. Yeah. Day fucking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole idea is to just create really create a different environment that you don't we don't normally have. Yeah. Right? And so um just laying in bed, no clothes. It there's just I, I don't know if anybody's, you know, maybe you should try it sometime. It really creates again a level of vulnerability and intimacy. Um that you typically you'll do with somebody after sex, right? You'll just lay there in bed and you'll mm. speak naked and like there's just this energy that's going on, right? So we'll create that. Um, without the sex, and we'll just we'll we'll be we'll like fast forward to that moment like after sex when you're just laying in each other's company with no clothes on. But think about the build do up. Touch though. each other, like do y'all like hug each other? Or we yeah, go, yeah. We just go with the flow. Y'all yeah. got self control. Yeah. We just go with the flow. You know, whatever feels good. Cause it can't always. Yeah, whatever yeah. feels good. Whatever feels right. Good. <laughs> right. <laughs> but think about the buildup, though. Like, yeah. think about when you're trying to maybe initiate sex with a woman. When you're just getting to know her, there's a lot of those moments that happen where you're maybe just caressing each other, or you're just, you know, experiencing certain parts of that person's body. But that doesn't mean that you're automatically gonna have sex. Yeah. But the buildup to then having sex is a little bit more. The anticipation is even more. So, I enjoy those moments with him because what I can't tell you about being a woman sometimes is that when a man does caress you in the back of your mind I'm, you're like shit does he want to have sex because mm -hmm. yeah. like damn I'm not really in the mood right now or I got something going on so it's to know that we can have those experiences together and it doesn't always have to be about that it actually makes me more intertwined with him I'm feeling that actually. Yeah. Like that a lot. Naked right. Tuesdays. Naked Tuesdays. <laughs> naked. All right, y'all. So <laughs> naked Tuesdays. That's what that's what y'all gotta do out there. Do naked I'm Tuesdays. Like any day. Naked Wednesday. Naked Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Lingerie just race Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Just draws Wednesday. <laughs> no. Um <laughs> quick question. So our our when we got the notice that you guys were like coming on the show, yeah. I went to your page yeah. and I saw some of y'all's episodes and I, I think it was about parents, like fuck them parents or something like that. Oh yeah. We did the fuck these kids and we did fuck, oh, fuck these parents. parents. Okay. We did both. Okay. We did both. Fuck these kids. So, <laughs> yeah. so like along like those lines, sick. like how do you feel like you've avoided certain pitfalls that are consequences of like trauma with your parents, trauma with like family. Mm -hmm. um, like, how do you avoid just not doing the things that you saw your parents do that was fucked up and you just didn't want nothing to do with it? It's mm. a great question. And we actually covered this um, in one of our episodes. I know. We, we, we actually, I, <laughs> I think we also have different perspectives about it, go. but I'm going to let you go ahead. Um, so, it is, I've now found that it, it is super important to make the best attempt that you can on dealing with your own personal tr childhood traumas prior to getting into a relationship, and even more importantly, prior to becoming a parent. 
uh, because I found that for myself, becoming a parent, when it came to discipline and things that um, that a parent reacts to, that their child does, well, the only thing that I had to reference was how my parents reacted right. and how they treated me. And that was my only reference. So that's naturally what came out. Come to find out that these are things that were traumatic experiences for me. So I was passing on trauma to my own children unknowingly because I didn't know any better. Um, and then finally was able to to realize it and and recognize that I needed to I needed to um, to deal with these traumatic emotions and put them to rest so that I didn't keep passing them on to my children and I need and it made I would eventually become a better parent so uh, I think it's super important for anybody who's who's thinking about becoming a parent um, take the time out take the time now to reflect back on your childhood and weed out any personal any tra traumas that you have uh, and get them out Get them out in the open because if you don't, speaking from personal experience, it's going to come out eventually. Yeah. And you, so and I, the last thing you do is want to find your kids. Are you getting it out in the open, like like on your own, dealing with it, or is it like get it out in the open with the your, the other party? Uh, well, it's everything is between us. Oh, okay. So like you know, um, you know, throughout our relationship, we check each other when we see that you know maybe we. As a parent, we've maybe uh, overstepped our boundary, you know, and it happens. You know? I'll give you an example, like to, to, to give you some context. He believed in physical discipline and I was not OK with that. And I wasn't OK with it because of past childhood trauma, because I, I realized that the only thing that physical discipline did was instill fear. It didn't it didn't give me the respect to my parent. It didn't give me the understanding of why what I did was maybe the wrong decision. It only just made me fear the person that was supposed to be my leader, the person that was supposed to be guiding me. And I, I had to really take the time to have him understand why physical discipline was only going to do that. But for me, why I said our perspectives were different, therapy really helped me. Therapy was some place where I went where I opened up about these are the things I went through and I see myself at certain moments kind of reflecting back upon those moments and saying, Wow, am I actually acting like my mom right now, even though mm. she was super traumatic to me? I'm acting like my father right now. So when I speak to, when you speak to a therapist, and I know everybody doesn't have the access to that, but man, when I tell you that I've read so many books that have helped me along my journey because I always didn't have the access to therapy. So if you can find ways to find information to help you with your past trauma so that you don't pass them on to your children, if you have the access to therapy, and I think my biggest piece of advice is um, find your peace in life. Because if you don't find your peace, you're always going to be in like this constant state of turmoil. And this world is like designed to have you in this constant state of stress. You got to slow down sometimes. And once I slow down, he could tell you there are many situations that we walk into. And I'm like, yeah, this is not good for me. I got to go. And he understands that about me. But old Gina would have just put myself in that position and dealt with the stress because that was my trauma speaking. So if it doesn't serve me, I got to go. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel that. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I know well, no, you well, I was just going to add that, you know, like she said, I all, that's all I knew as far as discipline went as a, as a parent was the way that I got disciplined as a mm. kid. Which is most of us. Yeah. Which, yeah. Was, which was through a physical discipline. Um, and I, fortunately, so you know, way. fortunately... I found someone that was the yin to my yang in that situation and was able to show me a different light when it comes to parenting and, you know, that there are other ways to resolve parenting and discipline without having to be physical. Um, and so in that whole journey, I was able to to put that trauma to rest and, re you know, and really not um, re reflect on it every time I needed to be a, a parent and, you know, and, and give out discipline. And that's why we said, fuck these parents. Yes, and that's why the episode was called, yeah, fuck, fuck these, these parents. parents. That's exactly where I got this question from. <laughs> great question. I was, Thank you I was done that. with that. So I'm like, fuck these kids. I would whoop oh, my son's ass. That <laughs> was... I would everybody up in this that, was, that, was our, <laughs> that was our first episode was, you know, fuck these kids because, it, you know, long story short, kids, kids are a lot. Yeah. And there are many moments where they push your buttons, and I'm like, you know what? You go ahead and do that. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you in, like, an hour or so. And, like, if I, again, find my peace because yeah. I'm, I'm not going to interact with you in, the, in that particular moment. But, you know, kids I give ass beatings with peace. <laughs> Does the peace come post the peace beating? Is, no, the peace is right before. I'm like, you, like I made make sure everybody's ready you, so you know it's going to happen. Okay, cool. 
All right. That's the worst feeling when you know it's going to happen all day long. time to decompress. We're going to get this over with. And after that, I'm going to give you a hug. And I'm going to be like, because my thing is this. I don't believe in, I don't believe when, and, and it's so, so funny because I was on the phone with my friend yesterday and I was like, you never find out somebody, you never find out who somebody is until you have a kid with them and you watch how they parent. That's the only way you really find out all that they truly have because they reveal it whether or not they know it, you know? So, like, there's a lot of things that my girl does that I don't agree on with parenting. And it is from a, a, a traumatic point. Like, my mom was very loud. Like, and so when I hear her yell, I'd be like, why are you yelling? Like, this is something minuscule. Mm-hmm. Now, I get it. They're kids. So kids tend to rebel on purpose. But it's a, I don't think that everything calls for that right and one of the things that i've when i have to draw the line is when we've had clear discussions and you still go out and do it Mm -hmm. and then there's a reaction to it for example give you a prime example right i I had the babysitter with my sister um watching the kids i said all right cool me and your mom gonna leave we gotta run errands you know what i'm saying don't do anything you're not supposed to do. You know you're not supposed to be playing because she has a son that is about the same age. You two can go ahead. You guys can play fight. I don't care what you guys do. But anything that you do, you do it in your room. It's partly her fault, too, but whatever. They're play fighting in the living room, mm-hmm. right? What they break. Because <laughs> I, I hear it already, what they break. <laughs> he, right, mm-hmm. throws something uh, mm. and it broke the TV. Oh. 70 inch TV, mind you. Wait. The TV's a year and a half old. See, it's, I believe I'm hearing this right now. What <laughs> happened to you? Yeah. Yes. Well, so, please finish, please. That's why I grabbed him. I so, said, like, oh, my thing, trauma. My you... thing was this. I'm, at, I'm in, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually trying to get some cologne, right? So, <laughs> and I get a call and I'm like, what the hell? So anyways, the one thing that I, I, I told him that I respected because I've been instilling like responsibility and accountability in him. You know, that's one of the things that say, like, how do you be respectful? He said, I got to be responsible and I got to be accountable. These are mm-hmm. things that are going to allow people to trust me. This is like what he says to, that, says to me that I'm like instilling in him. So the one thing that I admired about him is that because um, when I got the call, it was <laughs> my nephew telling on him. Like, <laughs> I just want to let you know, uncle, it wasn't me. It was Casey. And I'm like, what? So like, but then when I looked at my phone, he had called me twice to tell me mm-hmm. himself. You know, so I had to tell him, like, listen, I want to tell you this, that I genuinely appreciate this. Like, I'm seeing you, you know, trying to own up to what you did. However, it's not going to change the fact that what's about to happen because <laughs> now I got to go buy another TV. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So before I go buy this TV, let's go ahead. We're going to handle this. You want to layer up? Layer up. <laughs> Do your thing. We're going to get this over out the way. And once we got it out the way, you know, I had to tell him at the same time. I had to give him a hug and I had to be like, yo, listen. I'm not saying that this is something that I want to do, but if I'm not hard on you and I don't teach there are consequences. you that, like, I, and I, and this is coming from somebody that you know he I he's only eight years old, so he'll be nine, and he knows a lot about me. And I tell him like my the things that parents don't tell kids. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I want him to know this from an early age. You're not gonna get a second. I don't want to get too po- uh, political. You, you, a lot of black men You're don't. Not. A lot of black men don't get second chances Mm -hmm. in America. So if I'm hoping that this shows you, because I'm doing it out of love, you know what I mean? And I'm doing this with some type of repercussion because you can, I could take your Nintendo Switch, I could take your TV and your games and iPads and all that. I done did that a thousand times. It's only so much so you grow to learn to live without it, you know? But this right here, <laughs> this is gonna make you think. This is gonna make you think about it just a little bit longer. So you know, hey, um, I hope Dyfus don't come after me. <laughs> who, who was actually Dyfus? Dyfus, Dyfus. Division of Youth and Child Services. Oh, right. Marie already called them. That's Marie. <laughs> Shout out to Marie. But I we think that some things are necessary because, like, you, like there are kids that I believe. Do need to learn the hard way. I was one of them. So can I? I my to, brother. Listen, I want to. My brother, one hundred percent. One time we were at, we went to school, and I had to meet with one of our our, our son's counselor. 
right? And he was acting up in school, and he was really he was getting into quite a bit of trouble. So we sit down and we're talking about how can we get past this and, you know, ways to discipline and things like that. And I'm, you know, I'm telling him all the stuff that we're doing at home. And he's like, wow, you guys are really like. Pause. It was the principal. Oh, Continue. sorry. It was the principal. Thank <laughs> you. It was even higher up. Thank you. So it was not, serious. It was yeah, the principal. I remember right? this. So we're sitting, we're sitting there and he realizes that we were really trying. Right. And he says, and he says, OK, I want him to, to or someone's in the room. I want him to hear this. And I want you to hear this because I feel like that you need, you need to hear this. He goes. Me as a principal, I know that there's three different types of kids. There's the ones that you tell them not to not to do something and they don't do it. Mm -hmm. There's the other ones that you tell them to do not to do something and it takes them two or three times, but then they get it. He goes, and then there's the other kids that no matter how many times you tell them, they just don't get it until you. <laughs> <laughs> the principal did it. Yes. <laughs> And I was like, shout him out. And, the, and, and, and then the principal said, now, which kid do you he want? He goes to Mateo. He goes, he goes, he goes, which one are you? Huh? And I, and I tell you, this kid turned white as he stood there. All the blood just like left his body. It's actually hilarious. So I, I tell you, you. I feel you. Like sometimes, you know, you just, you got that kid. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's, 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 a way, it's a form of communication. You know, you really try not to resort to yeah. it. But my son, um, he's still the anarchy, so that's yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it happens. But like, you know, it, the thing is. You don't want it. Like, I was a lucky kid because I was good at everything else. So they're like, it's all right. He's going to be something. You know, there's a lot of kids who are going through those things. So. And they're mm -hmm. academically not doing well. And they're academically yeah. in, in every other category, you know, academic, whatever it may be. They're not doing well in any other category. And it's like, well, you know, I think that there's always a, this goes to a whole deeper topic. Of it course, it's a multivariant situation. But there are some kids that you just got to you got to apply some fear. Of the of the consequences, and if you don't, you can end up like me. You know what I'm saying? Like I had a judge look at me and said, "You don't fear consequence from authority. That's why I want to put you in jail." Mm. Mm. That's that's all it was because you don't fear any consequences. So when you don't fear, sometimes you gotta instill something in yeah. your kid. Otherwise, they could be off the chain. I'm trying to it's, tell you. It's important to show kids where the lines are drawn, right? What yeah. boundaries that they need to 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 heed by. And sometimes, you know, no matter how many times you tell them, they just don't see the boundaries, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, what's funny? It, it's, Aaron, did you get ass beans when you grew up? Did I? Love it. It wasn't, <laughs> and, and it wasn't even because I was bad. It was because. My mouth, like <laughs> you were bad. You were bad. No, like it was just that, that was me. I, I wanted to know, like, why. Aaron, some things why? never change. Okay. <laughs> no, but, but I, honestly, like real talk, like my brother got way more beans than me. But my brother is the one. Like you tell him, it don't matter. He has to feel it, experience <laughs> it, see it. Like mm -hmm. he has to know that this is an L for him to know it's an mm, L. Yeah. Me. Just tell me. I'm good. You know what I mean? You ain't, you ain't got to touch me. Nothing like just that. Tell but, me why. Exactly. Yeah. But, like, growing up, it was more so with me. Like, I just want to know why. Yeah. And my, my mom is from that generation. Like, you don't you don't, you don't don't ask why. Ooh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you speak you, when spoken to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Stay in a yeah. child's place. Yeah. Speak when spoken to. Don't say shit. You know? And if my mother... I think my mother was from, like, a younger generation... I probably wouldn't have gotten as many beaten as I did. You know, shout out Missy Jobert. I feel you. All right. <laughs> um, so I have a question. And I wanna and we I guess we're kind of talking about, I guess this kind of goes into like what I'm asking. Is how do you get through lows? Because I know I feel like if you have if you have kids, mm -hmm. that might send you to a low. Or because especially when you differ on how parenting mm -hmm. should look. What? Because because the, the low is when you can just be like, you know what? <laughs> that grass is greener. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like how, like if you're going to give advice to people who are in relationships, um, how do you get through a low? Well, that's a really um, good question. How do you get through a low? Wait, before you answer that, can I just ask, is it, are you referring to like, a personal low that no, no, we no. have, or this is a this is a family low. No, like low between, like in the relationship, relationship. like you and your partner, y'all, like y'all not seeing eye to eye. You know, things are just there, there's no synergy. You're ready to walk out? Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh. Seriously. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I think for us, um, it may work a little different when it comes to how we manage a low. Um, sometimes Evo needs space. And I've learned to respect the space that he needs. 
Um, there are many moments where we're not seeing eye to eye on something where he will say to me, I need to walk away from this situation. And in the beginning of our relationship, I would antagonize that and I would re I would continue to push him to, to figure out why are we in this position, right? And then I realized that that was counterproductive. So now we have a really great understanding of how to respect each other's potential low. So if he's feeling really hard about something or really, or he's angry about something or we're not seeing eye to eye on something, if he says to me, Gina, I need the space to time, uh, I need the space to think, or I need the space to like really collect my thoughts before I even tell you where we need to go with this, mm. I let him go. And in turn, when I need to go and I need to meet it head on, cause that's the Capricorn in me, he meets me there. But we give each other that like, um, it's like a scale. Um, and it's funny too, because we got ta we got uh, scales tattooed on us because that's how we balance each other. So we respect each other's moments of, I'm really angry, I'm really frustrated. Either leave me alone or meet me head on. It's just that constant, um, it's that constant respect, but at the same time, and I, I can't tell you how many times I have to say this, you have to let your ego go. Because there's so many times that he says something to me or we're not seeing eye to eye on something where that Gina steps forward where I'm like, you know what? Mm -hmm. You wrong. And this is why you're wrong. Da, 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 da. And how are we going to how are we going to find success in that? Right? Yeah. We're not. Because so, it's attacking. Because that's what that's exactly what it is. I, I'm trying to prove my point. Right. But what does my point even mean if we're not seeing eye to eye? So like we really learn how to respect each other in that way. Um, and you can add to that if you feel like I'm way off. Well, no, I, I think that what you said is, was spot on. But adding to that, um, I, th I want to tell you this. Right. And that <laughs> you don't really find out if you are marriage material until you work through a low. Right? Mm. You're not married. Wait, 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 wait. I need you to look at the camera. Say that again. <laughs> and say it again yeah. because that is the fucking truth. This is, this is the truth about marriage is that you, that's when you really find out whether you two are marriage material, right? When you're down and out, when all the love sparks are gone, when the heat and the tension is high and you find a way to make it through, right? That is what, that is the essence of marriage, two mm. people that go through thick and thin. Um, and in that space, I would like to say that we make a conscious effort to realize which one of us needs to be reached out and pulled out from the depth because one of us might be a little further out in the anger zone or in the don't talk to me zone mm -hmm. or in the I don't want to, I, I'm like redlining right now. Um, it takes one, someone has to step up and say, all right, listen, we need to like take a breather. We need to talk. Let's figure out how we can work through this because exiting this is not an option, all right? And that's where, that's to us where marriage, we, we built our marriage. Yeah. Is getting through those moments. And we're, we're pretty good at seeing which one of us needs to be like, because I've been there plenty of times where I'm just so fucking far gone. And she's like, all right, babe, listen. And it, we're like, it's a heated argument, whatever, but I'm just the one that's, I'm redlining. And she's like, all right, all right, listen, let's talk. And then once I see her calm, then I calm down. Because like before that, it's just both of us really like bumping heads. But it takes one, for us, it takes one calm energy to really set the tone and for the other one to be like, okay, okay, all right. So cooler heads. Yeah, let's, let's, let's all right, let's, so let's, we can do this for a little bit and then work through that. You know, and I, I think that that's. So it's poetic. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, nah, that's right, because I'm telling you from the opposite end of the spectrum. It's hard to come down or like to, to be that person yeah. to, 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 to bring the other person down. You know, it, uh, I forgot about Paul Mooney said, it, you know, he said a quote that I don't really want to say. It's about, Love Paul about, Mooney. Yeah, well, it's about, you know, being a, he's like, everybody want to be a black person, so nobody want to be a black no, person. No, he said. Yeah, I, listen, I, mean, <laughs> I know, I know, I know exactly what he said. said. Yeah, everybody want to be a black person, but nobody want to be a black person. And in the same sense, I feel like people want to be married, but don't nobody really want to be married. <laughs> You know? Yes, because it's those moments that people. He was on, he's on his. Guru, I always say this. He will be on his guru shit, and I'm just like, go ahead, speak. Go ahead. You know, and that's just that's uh, that's that I mean that's the nitty gritty of it. For, in all honesty, yeah. that's so true because you know, and, we, and you say this all the time, like. And we'll, I'll just put it on women on this. Like women just want a ring. Women mm -hmm. just want to be married. X, Y, and Z. But wedding day is cool. Engagement oh. ring is cool. But that marriage. 
that's the true test. The marriage, mm-hmm. like that is that is gonna let you know. Do you want to be in this bitch? Yeah. <laughs> are we in or are we out? And listen, you should have made that decision before. Like, <laughs> well, but 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 going along with what you be saying, it's like you don't know. You yeah. think you think you know, but you don't know. You get there. This is gonna be a really unpopular opinion, but I'm just gonna say this, and I'm I'm and based on my experience in the industry that I'm in, when you're getting married to someone, and I'm gonna put this on the women. When you're planning a wedding and the woman is saying, this is my day, Ooh. that's a red flag. Get rid of her. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> that is not what she said. Yeah. She cuzzo. Said. Oh, cuzzo. <laughs> it, is a red, it, is, it is a red flag that the scale is unbalanced. Yeah, it needs to be addressed. Because marriage is about us. Yes. Yeah. And when we got married, I can't even tell you how many things he did. That I literally just said, babe, you do that. And when we spoke to the people at our wedding, it was like, yeah, this is about me and Evo. This is not about me. But when you make it about you, that's what's going to happen in your relationship. You're always going to make the arguments about you mm, and about what you point. want, not what's good for the collective. That's a good point. And that's where they got that weak ass quote. Happy wife, happy, happy life. life. <laughs> Not but, stand by that though. <laughs> Wait, but what's the other one? It's happy spouse. Um, happy house. Yeah, house. Yeah, yes, I'm cool with that because <laughs> both spouses should be happy. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I'm saying? I I, I absolutely I agree. Damn, somebody be like, yeah, this is my day. I'd be like, excuse you. Okay, cool. No, it was definitely. It's gonna our, be your it was, day it was by yourself. Our day, and we had a we had a fucking blast. Where'd y'all get married? Um, we got married in New Jersey. Oh, oh okay. Like, n- honestly, I didn't even want a wedding. Me neither. Um, because I just wanted us to have an experience together. It didn't necessarily have to be a wedding. But I'm glad that we did it because it was a party. I don't even want to call it a, a wedding. Um, we had like 95 people. It was really small. But, man, when I tell you. Y'all uh, turned up. Turned up. I remember the, the, the DJ or the maitre d was like, well, well, what do you want? I said, listen, I'm going to tell you what we don't want. We don't want no macarena. We don't want no cha-cha slide. We don't want no, um, what's that other dance? Um, chicken dance, um, 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 oh, chicken dance. No, no, two times now, y'all. Yeah. Dun, 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 I didn't want oh, that. Oh, um, the, I can't yeah. think of the name of yeah, it, but I know you're talking okay. about. We didn't want none of that. We were like, we want hip-hop, we want house, and we want reggae. And we want it all night, and we want to eat, and we want to drink. And that, that's it. That's all you need. Yeah. And that's what it was. That is all you need. Yes. That was a lit wedding. Right. Yeah. Well, so listen, on, in, in all honesty, I, I did banquets for like seven years, so I kind of knew the recipe a little bit <laughs> of what makes a good party. And so when we, we decided to get married, she was like, you know what? You take the lead on this. And so yeah. I, did, I did all the food tasting. I picked the venue. Word. I went and got the DJ. Oh, you sound like my husband. I mean, right? I just, I had I the like, experience. Let me just get you know? and get this makeup. <laughs> that was <you> know? me. <laughs> and so. I'm good. And that was it. I mean, it was just good food, good music, and good people. And that's yeah. all you really need. For real. So we're, we're, we're actually going to wrap up soon, but I have one last question. Mm. I have to ask this. So, and, and I think that, and I think that you've actually said this before. I disagree because it's not my perspective, but women tend to talk a lot about their relationship with the people around them. Mm. Um, whereas I think men, men probably don't, mm-hmm. um, just because they're... They, they tend we to take be, our L's in silent. No, because y'all tend to be horrible communicators. Um, but wow. so how important, in y'all's opinion, mm-hmm. and just based on your experience, like how is how important is it to keep your relationship within the relationship? Mm. Like I understand we everyone needs an opportunity to vent. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone needs a person that they trust that they can ask their opinion. You know, so on and so forth. But like as far as keeping. The majority of the relationship private, like how do you, what do you, what do you what's your perspective on that? Um, I'm a firm believer in keeping keeping your um, your issues behind closed doors, right? Um, it was there's nothing there's nothing um, there's nothing that that it, that aids in your your business being spilled out to right. a bunch of people that can't they have nothing to do with the situation and they can't help resolve it. Um, and I think that one of the one of the reasons why for a long time, you know, a lot of people looked at us like we were like the perfect couple. Right. But we weren't. We just dealt with our issues behind closed doors. And we had a lot. 
we just didn't express them publicly. So people looked at us as like we didn't have no problems. When in reality, we just dealt with our problems differently. In private. In private. But know, I, but I, I think it's super important. But I will say this. So when we, <laughs> this funny story, when we got our stamps for our wedding invitations, there was a lady at the post office and she said, oh, y'all getting married? And we said, yeah. She said, can I give you a piece of advice? And we were like, <laughs> absolutely. We were like really young. We're going to take any advice that we can yeah. from a woman that had been married for a long time. She said something to the effect of, you know, never go to sleep, angry at each other, um, always communicate and never tell anybody your business. And when I tell you, we took, took that, that and, ran, and with ran with it. Because that wasn't it. What that wasn't a part of our relationship prior to that. Yeah. Like, early mm. in our early on stages, all right. Just to give her a lot of the credit that she deserves, I was a short tempered, hot headed, loud mouth, very vocally aggressive. Just the way again, my, I grew up that way. That's the way I like. My father showed me how you expressed your emotion, and um, later found through through her because she's very like calm and very like like talk to her stuff that that's the way to communicate so then once we the she that woman gave us that advice you know we really took that and mm -hmm. applied it to a relationship and it was one of the best things that we ever did but i will say on the flip side of that 10 years in we realized that you still need close loving yeah. loyal people yeah. in your life that you can share oh, your hardships yeah, with 100 and that and that is the most important piece of that that they need to yeah. be people that are invested in your marriage right that know that you two are loving partners not people that are kind of looking for your demise in a sort of way because there Absolutely. are people like that but if you have good family members good friends that you can share your hardships with and you can bounce ideas off of i also think that that's essential we kind of shied away from that for a little bit but now we have some really great um close friends and family that we can share these things with um that we know that they're going to look at things from both ends of the spectrum right and they're not going to be one-sided in the conversation so if you have people like that in your life or you can find people like that in your life then i say yeah maybe share some things but just don't be telling some random people yeah. on the street like you gotta know who you're not, talking to yeah you, you just yeah. can't be sharing your business with some random people on the street because they're they're not in it for you for you or just or for y'all yeah or just yeah. Or just any like the thing is people think they have good friends and they really don't mm -hmm. right and a lot of times when they, you think you have a good friend until you realize that something that really means a lot to you when you're thinking about doing the wrong thing they ate it they're mm -hmm. aiding the wrong thing. instead of checking you yeah that's you know yeah. And, yeah. and like i have situations where i got two people that i call and i vent to all the time mm -hmm. and never in their never in any of our conversation it's well, you shouldn't be dealing with that or, yo, you don't deserve that or, you know, something to egg me on to lead, leave. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always, a, well, you know what? I understand how you feel. Just calm down. You know what I'm saying? Like, they kind of let you be, they'll take the decompressing role. And I think, like, you know, I agree firmly with that because I go through this shit every day. <laughs> <laughs> Rico, and don't, don't do I her. Got, don't do I got her. I got to talk to somebody about it. And and the thing is, is like I'm so happy because if I call some of the homies, mm -hmm. I already know what my, I know what their response is. Yeah, you know. So I do think, like you said, it's so important and essential to have people that are just as inve invested yes. into your relationship, not you as a friend yeah. in your relationship. Because listen, this is a great relationship for you. This is just a low. It's a temporary low. Y'all yeah. gonna, you guys have powered through this. You powered through that. You're gonna power through this. Just give it more time. That's exactly you know? it, Rico. That's exactly it. I agree. I'm learning. Anyway, don't I'm don't do her like such that. Such a hater, like no, God. no, I'm not. I'm just like don't don't do her I like that. Truth. I didn't speak nothing bad. I said what I go through, Rico. Right? You know what I'm saying. Anywho, well, guys, we like we really appreciate y'all coming in. Like this has been an incredible conversation. I think that y'all have given a lot of insight with respect to people who want to be in their relationships because mm. a lot of times people don't they think they want to but they, want to, they, yeah. they don't want to yeah. you know <laughs> so um give us y'all's information again so that everybody can find y'all yeah. and you know listen in on y'all's podcast yeah. so we are shit talk fridays but you can find us on all platforms at st fridays so we're on tiktok we're on instagram and we're on youtube again at st fridays Apple music amazon Everywhere. 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 Literally. They might be on the, 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 the church uh, handbook page. I don't know. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I> but... <laughs> right, y'all. Oh, go ahead. Oh, you I was going to say, just Google search ST Fridays and you. Yeah, you'll find come us. Up. 
All right. Absolutely, y'all. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank y'all. Remember, y'all ate at the table. This is a no judgment zone. We love y'all. We appreciate the love. And keep tuning in. Peace out. Oh, yeah. You, we do that. Too.